what we're looking at here is high voltage metering unit, primary metering unit. What's up guys? We're taking a look at a piece of equipment that I don't think we've ever seen in any of our videos before. Other than a couple years ago, I did a pad mounted metering unit. I will put a link to that one in the description below. We get some real good up close shots of that. But what we're doing today, we're, we're just changing the meter for that high voltage metering unit. It's quite a bit different than standard metering and let's go over it. So this is a residential meter. Probably all seen them. You probably get one on the side of your house. And residential meter, plug and play, super, super basic concept. Basically the power comes in through your mast. The, the neutral typically goes straight through. You have your two hots, 120 volt going through, 120 volt going through, 240 if you measure across and the neutral just as I said passes straight through but basically all the power you use comes in goes through that lug the amperage gets metered and out through the bottom lug and into your home not all meters work like that obviously when you get large buildings this that's a big dam that hill there on the other side is the water supply for our entire city so this building uses quite a bit of power so you get into extremely high amperage and you're going to melt the internals of the meter it's just simply not possible to meter high current and it's not possible really to meter high voltage so first thing i'm going to show you guys on the meter itself you can see that this meter is rated for 240 volts and up to 200 amp that's very important there's ton of different types of meters even for residential there are transformer rated meters what a transformer rated meter is the voltage and the current has to be transformed before it passes through the meter because the values are simply too high they're going to damage the equipment so this guy here not only is it a transformer rated meter but it's also designed for three phase that's why there's way more lugs here there are self-contained three phase meters this is self-contained, meaning that all the metering, there's, there's no extra equipment basically to transform the values. The, the voltage and the current will simply pass through one lug and out the other if it's a three-phase customer that uses less than 200 amps. So a customer like this, I'm not sure what their service entrance is rated for. Let's say probably 600 amp, 800 amp maybe. In order to measure that, we don't necessarily need that primary metering tank. Oftentimes, in fact, most times, there's some CTs, current transformers, and PTs inside the building itself. So back to that whole 200 amp deal. This guy here, you can see it's rated for only 20 amp and up to 277 volts three phase. So that means the voltage they're using there is, or the voltage I should say that's transformed down to there is at 120 volts. If this was self-contained, it could be up to 347, 600 volt, which again, which would be a different meter. This is probably all about as clear as mud right now. So let's take a walk over and have a little bit closer look at that primary metering unit. I should add, Usually these primary meeting units are used at sites where there's multiple buildings. A uh, great example would be our local military base. The military base has I don't know, maybe a dozen buildings on site. Instead of bringing the power in and metering each and every building, there's a high voltage primary metering tank like that, one meter, and all the power used on the entire site is metered on that one meter. Keeps things pretty simple. Also, this setup is used when there's a lot of customer owned equipment. We have some large companies that don't like having easements and, and us having access to their properties, especially large properties with all kinds of operations on the go, lots of uh, safety concerns, security concerns. So they simply, or we simply meter the power going in. That way we don't have to access their property to work on our equipment. All the lines, once it passes metering tank, are typically owned by the customer and maintained by the customer as well. So let's take a look at this metering tank again try to keep the camera out of the sun here and we'll get a zoom 
my new phone has way better optical zoom here. So that's 7200, that's 7200 volts, that's the PT, that's a potential transformer. You can see that large bushing, probably 8 inches long or so, there's 7200 volts coming into that bushing. The, the power the customer is using isn't passing through that. You can see, awful hard to see, but this is one phase. The power the customer is using is traveling through that wire, going right on through here and passing through the CT, and then down into those cables going to the building. So the PT, the power the customer is using isn't passing through the PT. We simply tap off it. It's, it's in parallel to the customer's feed, not in series. We tap off to get an exact measurement of the voltage. Now we know there's 7200 volts in the line, but realistically there's probably 7350 volts, for example. So that PT is at a 60 to 1 ratio, which a 60 to 1 ratio from 7200 volts is going to bring that down to 120. There's probably going to be, if we were to do a voltage check inside this access panel, probably going to see 123, 124 volts. Multiply that by 60 to get your, your line voltage. So that 120, that makes it so that the voltage is easily readable for metering purposes. And once we build a customer, then there's, there's a billing ratio that's applied the 60 to 1. There's the same thing with the CTs, which the CT ratio on this guy, I believe that there's actually a stamp on the panel. Most times it's 400 to 5. So the CT ratio on this guy is 100 to 5. So if there's 100 amps being used by the customer, the meter is going to see 5 amps. So this, this is what the inside of the panel here looks like. It is a, a lineman that wires this up. This is owned by us. You do need a, a special course to do metering, which I do have, and sometimes I'll cover the fella. We, we got a, a metering guy that does all these installs. I'll cover him when he's on summer vacation sometimes, put on a podcast. Usually, if you're inside a building, it can take the whole morning to wire stuff up. This one's pretty straightforward. But a couple important things to remember. One, when we change this meter, it's important to make sure that you have the same ratings of the meter. So you can see the 20 amp, 120 to 277 volts. You can still see the screen just says safe on it. So not sure what's going on with that, to be honest, but we're gonna change it out and send that to our metering department and they're gonna investigate that a little further. So just got the meter ring here. I already cut all the seals off. Even though this is a transformer rated meter, Again, it is still plug and play, but as I mentioned, there are a few important things to remember. One is, we call this a, a test switch. This is just to isolate the meter from the lines. So we'll take that cover off, which is kind of stuck on there. There we go. I'm not gonna go over the wiring here a whole lot, but we got our red, yellow, blue, basically our A, B, and C phase. The same thing with the, these are potential. These are coming off the potential transformer. The wires with the black lines on them, and there should be white on this, but it's pretty faded. Whoa, that's some intense zoom going on there. there. If you look at that red one, for example, you can see that white stripe going around it. Let's zoom back out. So, the white line and the black line, those are both from the CT and they indicate the polarity. Basically the power coming in and the power going out. You don't want to make sure you don't have reverse polarity or it's, it can mess up the metering. The most important, absolutely most important thing to do whenever you're dealing with CTs is you don't want to have an open circuit, a live CT. If someone in, in the comments wants to have, to give an explanation as, as to why I'm a little rusty on the book part of that, but as a lineman, what's important to know is you're having to deal with CTs, the CT is energized, whether it's a bar type, such as this, where the current's passing directly through, or a window type, which it passes through basically a, a donut and using the magnetic field, it picks up the current. If that's energized, you open the circuit. As soon as I open one of these switches, it's gonna be open circuit. 
you can, it can cause uh, basically an infinite loop of current that the current can, can spike and it cause some arcing and damage the equipment. So that being said, when I do open these, there is, it's gonna close the circuit for me. It's gonna short out that CT. It's hard to see, but let's start opening these guys up. All right. So the customer still has power right now. These transformer rated meters, the customer's feed isn't passing through this meter, obviously with these tiny little wires. So there's no interruption to the customer's power. Basically, they're just getting free power right now. So these guys here that are down as far as they can go, this lug right here is shorting out against that guy in the center, which is connected to the bottom, which is causing a short between the positive and the negative side of the CT. Now the meter's still alive. We could pull that now, but there's not really much point when we have a disconnect for the potential. So we isolated, completely isolated that meter now. So I'll be able to pull that meter off. Whenever I get a meter that's acting up, I always look at the back to see if any of the lugs were heating up or anything. Same with the socket. You can see everything here is in pretty good shape. I am gonna add a little bit of meter grease, however, to the new meter. All right, I just paused the video here and added some of that GE meter grease to those lugs. These here, just to kind of show you guys the setup a little better, that three phase line, that's the main feed that feeds about 50 miles out of the country. And this is just a, a side tap. If we wanted to isolate this metering unit, we would pull those cutouts there, pull those switches open. That'll shut the power off to the customer and also isolate that metering unit. All right, so I just paused the video again to put that meter on. Another thing I do want to point out, before you re-energize that, might as well put that ring on. That ring grabs the meter, secures to the back of it. If there is a short, at least that meter's not gonna blow off at me. It's, it's pretty unlikely, but just an extra step, might as well do it. So now we can begin to re-energize this, just using our Class Zero rubber gloves. And this guy should boot right up. It's gonna go through booting stage. This here is a smart meter. So that's gonna boot up and eventually give us our readings. For those of you wondering what this toggle is right here, that's a, a demand toggle. All the new meters have them. They're not necessarily all used. Basically that measures the peak demand. So at whatever point during the month, the very most amount of power that the customer uses at a very specific time or at any given time, it, it will document on that. So it's almost like a, like a glad hand. As power is being used, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go up, it's gonna capture that peak amount of power. We use that to make sure that the line going in is able to withstand that peak power, that peak amount of current flow. Uh, I guess a better explanation would be maybe a customer's usage is very typical. Um, let's say it's a thousand bucks a month for the power. I don't know how many kilowatt hours that would be. Same as all the neighbors, but maybe they have some really big industrial equipment and that entire thousand bucks is used just for a quick startup on one day a month during manufacturing. So the line feeding in would be different for that particular customer versus the customer next door that cost wise uses the exact same amount of power. So the last thing we're gonna do, gonna cover that live stuff back up and we're gonna seal everything up. We're gonna put our meter seals on the meter ring. We gotta seal up this so that we know nobody's tampered with that. We're gonna seal up our demand ring so that it wasn't reset. And then we're going to pad lock our cabinet. So that's pretty much it on this one, guys. Uh, lots of really, really great comments in the comment section. There's some I don't know, I'm assuming engineers and stuff that watch this channel that 
know a lot of the information that's above and beyond a lineman's training. So if you guys ever have any information like that, please go into the comment section. Uh, it helps myself, it helps the viewers out. We're, we're all in this together to learn and to share our experiences. That's the best part about this channel. So drop a comment, drop a like, even if it's just to say hi, whatever. It's all appreciated. I will see you guys all soon. Stay safe.